Okay, so I'm going to screw this back in. There we go. I'm going to look at the lens under here. That's my next step. This is a mirror. I want to make sure... Well, maybe if I move it over here, I can actually shine a light in. So I don't have to uninstall it. Well... It looks pretty clean. And then these down here, you can just look, and they actually look really clean too, which I'm happy about. So, I actually think we're good. Take another look down here. Okay. So, I actually think we're good. Again, I was just getting a flashlight to kind of look in there and to make sure the lens looked clean. And it did. So, okay. Well... Our next step is to start setting up the pump and plugging everything in and doing a test fire. So I think we're good. I'll show you the back of the unit once I have everything hooked up and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so this is the back of the machine. You can see it's 110 volts and that is what uh, the eBay uh, auction said it would come as. So I just double check that. And this is the fan vent. It simply slides on. There's real, really no good way for it to attach. Um, I've taped it on for right now. Although you can't see it in this video. You see that red wire? That is where I've grounded it. Um, if you have a ground in your house already, you won't need that. Uh, also, here's the water pump, the in and out. And we're going to hook that up here in a moment. Okay, so we are here, and I'm using, they suggest you use distilled water, but uh, um, I just had bottled water, so I'm using that. Um, I actually have a chiller set up now, but when I first set this up, I just used a little bit of water uh, in a small bucket or container. Um, I also have a temperature gauge here. And that's great. They suggest having the water at least 35 degrees. I think that's a little bit overkill. But since I don't have a chiller or didn't when I set this up, I used ice. And that worked pretty good for the few tests that I did. Alright, well, let's go on to the, uh, the next step here. And if you can see, the water temperature is already starting to drop. But let's go on to the next test. Okay, so a little bit quirky. This is the water in. And that's the other one you see over there is the water out. Um, this was a little adapter, so this would fit to the actual pump. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put it under water, turn it on. Another thing you'll notice, I've actually... Uh, put my little digital therm thermometer here. We're at 35 degrees. Hopefully that's pretty close. So, all right. Next step. Here we go. Well, it's not leaking. So the tube is in good shape during shipping. I'm assuming water is going through there. Matter of fact, I can kind of see it right there. little air there. There's an air bubble. Kind of wish I wanted to get those out of there. But uh, that's the pump it comes with, so we'll start with that. And that'll get a more powerful pump. Um, one other thing, I thought it might be important to get a maybe a GFI, since we're dealing with water. That's a code in most places. Um, let me see what else can I tell you deeper bucket. Mine's pretty shallow. You probably want to fill that more. Um, the only other drawback I see here is you actually have to take off the, the fan pipe to be able to see 
what the laser is doing. So maybe a water flow sensor would be good too. Those are really cheap. But at least we're getting some from water. So what we're going to do next is we're going to turn on the laser here in a moment. And uh, I'll show you what the, uh, the manual says to do before actually cutting something. Okay. Just uh, double checking the uh, water pump here. Everything's flowing before I turn on the laser. Um, that's really important. If you don't have any water flowing, your laser tube will overheat and you'll have a minor catastrophe that could cost you anywhere from $100 and up. Okay, so I decided to put my uh, thermometer here, my 34 degrees in the water. Um, the uh, quick instruction video and manual, well, the video says to keep this between 8 and 10 on your milliamps. Uh, before turning that on, I turn the milliamps all the way down. Uh, this turns on the laser off and on. And this is, I guess, must send a, a test switch. So, a test burn or something. So, we're done there. I'm going to turn it on, and maybe we'll see the head move. Okay, so, let's turn on the laser. Okay, the head is moving to the upper left X and Y corner. Perfect. I was, I'm glad to see this uh, happen since uh, this item was shipped all the way from China. Okay, so here is the panel. And the gray dial adjusts how many milliamps you're sending to the laser tube. I like to keep that at zero when I first turn on the machine. You have your laser switch, which actually turns on the laser. And then you have your test switch, which actually sends a, a beam of light. And we'll use that uh, here in a second to test fire and make sure the laser is working. Uh, one note from the manufacturer, don't go above 10 milliamps. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do a test fire now that everything's operational. Okay, so we're going to start aligning the lenses. And so I'm going to put a piece of tape on the first mirror here, or it's actually the second mirror. I'm going to send a test fire. Here we go. Perfect. So I know the laser beam is working, and it's bouncing into the second mirror there. Now I'm going to do more alignment. I'm going to put some tape on the laser, the lens on the laser head. This is the end of video two. We'll continue in video three.